Yeah, within an international context. That is to say, it is not only happening in the United States of America. And one of the problems we constantly face here is that even those of us who are active in progressive movements often succumb to American exceptionalism. And we often only think about what's happening in this country. And, and I should say that, the, the, that when um, we began to use the concept prison industrial complex, it was in part because it allows us to think about uh, the relationship, as I said before, between uh, um, mass incarceration, as we call it in this country, and um, what is happening around the world. The rise of the prison industrial complex in, in Africa, in Asia, in Latin America, in, in Europe. And I think it's very important, this is another turning point. Uh, I actually had thought about uh, at least six or seven other turning points, but I thought I'd better uh, conclude when you ask the first question. Uh, but I think a major turning point uh, uh, in this movement uh, came with the introduction of um, the struggle for justice in Pal Palestine. that we learn a great deal about the carceral state by looking at the occupation of Palestine. Um, we're recognizing that Palestine is the largest open-air prison in the world. And so what that means is that even if we call for decarceration, but it's decarceration using repressive carceral methods to surveil those who are on the outside, we have still not managed to effectively challenge the carceral state. And, and so you were talking, uh, Farid, about uh, the emergence of Black Lives Matter and uh, uh, Ferguson. And of course, we should never forget that it was Palestinian activists in Palestine who were the first to offer solidarity to protesters in Ferguson. And so I think that internationalism is important. And we have to add that to uh, the analysis that sees the rise of mass incarceration as a direct outgrowth of the um, history of the struggle against racism in, in this country, history of racism, rather. Of course, the whole notion of the new Jim Crow is very important because, yes, we are witnessing uh, the um, a greater entrenchment of structural racism. As Michelle Alexander pointed out, there are more uh, black men in prison and under the direct control of the criminal justice system than there were in prison than there were enslaved, rather, than there were enslaved in 1850. But at the same time, we, we need to think about um, the fact that it was because of, of, of deindustrialization, because of the fact that uh, 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 corporations began to migrate, yes, immigrant corporations in search of lower wages in search of, 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 of cheaper labor forces that help to create this terrible crisis. Because people who lost their jobs as a result of, of, of the fact that the corporations that had provided them before were gone. Um, and at the same time, we have this concomitant attack on the welfare state. So uh, there's no more welfare, there's no more free health care, there's no more mental health care, there's no more free education. And as a result, we see the production of these surplus populations in this country, and at the same time, in Africa and Asia, in the global south, surplus populations are being produced because 
international finance will no longer permit capital to be used in ways that are helpful to human beings, but rather the IMF and the World Bank demand that capital be um, uh, focused on profitable sectors of the economy. So you have these surplus populations in Africa and you know all over South America. And so we see, and I, I, think, I just think it's so important to recognize this as a part of a global trend and not just only here in the US. And I'll say finally that it was so important that we recognize, going back to Ferguson, that police departments, little tiny police departments all over the country were being trained in counter-terrorist strategies by the state of Israel. And so this meant that we had to not only think about the carceral state, we had to think about the security state as well. We had to broaden our um, understanding of what it, 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 it means to struggle to transcend the punishment paradigm. Because we also have to figure out how to transcend the policing paradigm. And so, you know, finally this let us understand how interrelated our struggles were with, with the effort to prevent the damaging effects of Islamophobia. And so one can say now that the most violent expressions of racism can be seen in Islamophobia. Mm -hmm. So I think this, this may seem a bit complicated, but on the other hand, it's very simple. And we should recognize that um, we can no longer be so US-centric that we only think about our own history and we only think about what's happening.